Hi everyone, and welcome back to Synthesis Workshop. I'm your host, Alicia, and for today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Olivier Budis. Olivier began his studies at the University of Geneva, where he earned his bachelor's degree in chemistry in 2017, followed by his master's in chemistry in 2019. Olivier most recently obtained his PhD in chemistry at the University of Geneva in the Lacquer Group earlier in 2025. And with that, I'll hand it over to Olivier. Welcome, and thanks again for joining us. Thanks for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here today to present recent studies of original and surprisingly stable chiral molecules containing four heteroatoms linked to a single shared carbon. When you consider stability of acetals, the hydrolysis in acidic media is favored, releasing the following carbonic compound. So, in principle, if you add even more heteroatoms, the chemical and configurational stability can be questionable for carbon bearing three or four heteroatoms. That could lead formally to an easier ring opening compared to acetal types molecules. Indeed, these compounds were rarely synthesized in the literature with only very few data of, uh, on configurational stability. Also, in this case, it is important to precise that in spiral compounds, only two different heteroatoms are necessary to make the molecule chiral. Two examples of spiral stereocenters involving three and four heteroatoms connected to a single shared carbon center were described in the literature and displayed a very low configuration stability with delta G of 20 kcal per mole. This corresponds to a half-life of racemization of around 50 seconds, which means that after 50 seconds, you will go through 100% EE to 50% EE. So, in our group, we developed a methodology using cpyrotinium catalysis with diazo compound generating a metal carbine in presence of a cyclic carbonate in order to generate this tetraoxide substituted methanes we can also call them orthocarbonates. We did a little scope of the reaction with different substituents employing methyl diazo and isopropyl diazo and also gem dimethyl and gem diphenyl substituents on the cyclic carbonates. All the tetraoxide substituted methanes were formed in a good to excellent yield up to 92% with a better efficiency with the isopropyl diazo. Then, to get more data and get the uh, X-ray diffraction structure, an enantiopure carbonate was employed as a chiral auxiliary to afford a mixture of diastereomers that could be separated by chromatography column and crystallized independently in order to get the absolute configuration of the two different diastereomers. In this case, the possible isolation of these two diastereomers giving a first clue about the high configuration stability of the compound synthesized. Following this, the two enantiomers of the compound here were separated by CSPHPLC thanks to a semi preparative Ig column in an excellent enantiomeric ratio of more than 99% EE for each fraction. To better characterize the enantiomers, the electronic circular dichroism of the two was measured. Theoretically, this phenomenon is due to the differential absorption of the left and right circularly polarized light that is entering in a sample. This will lead to a differential absorption and then to a negative or positive cotton effect, which in case of an antiomer, the two cotton effects are mirror imaged. The experimental ECD showed this mirror image behavior that proved the enantiomeric character between the two samples with a weak but detectable characteristic response with a GF value of 510 to the minus 5. Also, the ECD spectra of the two configurations were calculated and we saw really good overlap between the theoretical and experimental ECD spectra that thanks to this, we could assign the absolute configuration of the enantiomers. Negative cotton effect corresponding to R enantiomer and the S enantiomer being the positive cotton effect. The global ECD signal of the molecules depends on all the different signals of the different conformers ponderated by the population in solution. 
In our case, it was shown that four different conformations are present in solution, showing a pretty flexible skeleton despite the spiral rigidity. First, the orientation of the ester can be either S-cis or S-trans, and also there are different puckering modes of the saturated phi membrane in which the position of the 2-methyl can affect drastically the sign of the ECD signal. And it was shown that the global ECD signal sign was dominated by a certain puckering mode of the phi membrane rather than the orientation of the ester. Then we decided to analyze a bit more the caroptical of the two diastereal owners. In this case, absorption and ECD spectra were also recorded and calculated for the two diastereal owners. At the beginning, we didn't expect a big influence of the pinean part on the ECD sign due to the non-absorption of saturated hydrocarbon moieties in the 250 nanometer region. However, we observed two negative bands for the two different diastereomer. That was initially a bit surprising, but it was still confirmed by the TDDFT calculation also predicting the two negative bands. For these two molecules, not four, but only two different conformers were calculated with population around 50% each, depending this time only on the orientation of the ester moiety due to a very rigid pine skeleton. However, in this case, the two diastereomer displayed a very different fiber ring conformation, in which the first one displayed an envelope conformation, while the other one displayed a half chair conformation. To understand more this behavior, the frontier molecular orbitals were calculated and giving the major bond at 250 nanometers which correspond to the homo lumo energy for pi pi star transition, with both the homo and the lumo located on the unsaturated ester. Following this, the sector definition was done with the first plane in green containing the unsaturated esters and the two other plane, orange and gray, being orthogonal to the green plane. According to the spectroscopy theory, the ECD signal should depend on the closest perturber next to the chromophore, which is the unsaturated ester, that breaks the symmetry of the molecules. So in this case, this perturber is the methyl group in this position, and thanks to the sector definition, we can see that the methyl, in this case, of the two diastereomer occupy region with the same signs, which are homotopics and not enantiotopics, explaining why we observe the two negative bands. To give support in this theory, a truncated model was also calculated by cutting the whole pine and part and just capping with hydrogen generating three naked methyls. And we could observe a very good overlap of the full molecules compared to the truncated model in the 250 nanometer region. To obtain precise data on enantiomerization barriers, we used the method developed by Oliver Trapp and Volker Schwick which is the dynamic variable temperature carol chromatography and the peak profile analysis. This technique, applicable in both the gas and liquid phases, offers a key advantage. It allows for the studies on configuration stability without requiring the separation of enantiomers. The principle relies on the temperature-dependent interconversion of enantiomers as the temperature increase and racemization begins, enantiomers A partially convert to B and vice versa. This dynamic equilibrium leads to characteristic peaks distortion in the chromatograms. The tailing of the peak A and the fronting of the peak B will lead to a plateau-shaped profile. And then, thanks to the unified equation here, the relative height of the plateau is directly related to the rate of enantiomerization. The higher the plateau is, the faster is the interconversion. Then, it is possible to perform the airing plot with the kinetic constant at the five different temperatures in order to get all the activation parameters such as the delta G, but also the enthalpy and entropy of activation. In our case, 
a high value of delta G of 27.6 kilocalories per mole was obtained with the first postulated transition state involving the ring opening of the CO bond of the conjugated enol moiety, which is the best living group in our case. It is very important to note that a very strong negative entropy contribution may be a reason to explain the particular stability of these compounds. Similar results were also obtained with this slightly different molecule, just employing the methyl derivative. We measured the configurational stability, this time by dynamic HPLC, but the conditions were close to the temperature limit of the HPLC, affording less precise data. Then, we decided to extend the reactivity and the studies to other trioxide derivatives. Now, the presence of the nitrogen caused higher dissymmetry of the molecules. In the scope, two sets of conditions were employed in order to optimize the yield that is substrate dependent. Initially, n carbamate moieties were employed to synthesize the azatrioxa derivatives, achieving good to excellent yield up to 98% for the truck derivatives. Notably, the n block truck and allo group all performed well in this transformation, affording very stable products. Employing bigger ester groups also worked well with very good yield associated. Similarly to before, Diastereomers could be also synthesized and isolated using enantiopure carbamate substrate coming from the reduced form of the s valine which is a very cheap source of chirality. Here, in the latter case, the absolute configuration of the diastereomers could be assigned thanks to the X-ray analysis of the first eluted major diastereomer isolated. Following this, excellent enantiomeric separation was achieved for the orthocarbamates derivatives. Notably, its ECD spectra exhibited a significantly enhanced chiroptical response, approximately tenfold greater than that observed for the tetraoxa derivative. In the diastereomic series, now the ECD signals appear to be nearly mirror image of each other, an observation that contrasts with the tetraoxa series. Additionally, the dissymmetry factors were comparable to that observed in the enantiomeric series of the azatrioxa derivatives. By comparison, the absolute configuration of the enantiomeric series in the azatrioxa compounds could be assigned by analyzing the two cotton effects of this closely related structure. The negative cotton effect in blue corresponding to the S enantiomer while the positive cotton effect in red is corresponding to the R enantiomer. Returning to the comparison between the two diastereomic series in the tetraoxa and azatrioxa compounds, the key difference lies in the proximity of the perturbing group that breaks the molecular symmetry. In the azatrioxa series, the closest perturber is positioned two bonds closer than in the tetraoxa analogs. This structural difference accounts for the near mirror image ECD signature observed in the azatrioxa diastereomic series, along with a dissymmetry factor that is approximately 10 times higher than that of tetraoxa series. Similarly, enantiomerization of this compound was investigating using VTCSPGC. In this case, an even higher enantiomerization barrier was observed, exceeding 34 kilocalories per mole. Interestingly, in this case, a strongly positive entropy contribution was detected, suggesting that a different ring opening mechanism may occur in the uh, enantiomerization process. The enantiomerization mechanism was further examined using TFT calculation. For the tetraoxa series, the pathways were relatively straightforward, as anticipated the cleave bond correspond to the conjugated enol moieties, which is the best living group. This results in a planar and rigid transition state with a calculated barrier of 27 kilocalories per mole, which is very close to the experimental value. In contrast, the ground state is characterized by greater Conformational flexibility in solution, which likely account 
for the observed negative entropy contribution and consequently the enhanced configurational stability. For the Azatrioxa series, however, cleavage of the same bond did not yield a viable planar transition state, although the intermediate one double prime can form readily, it cannot reorganize into a planar geometry suitable for transition state formation. As a result, an alternative pathway involving cleavage of the CN bond was examined. This pathway yielded a calculated enthalpy of activation comparable to the experimental value. In this context, it is more appropriate to consider the calculated delta H rather than delta G, as the latter would include only the vibrational contribution to entropy, but not the conformational one, which is instead expected to play a major role in the formation of the transition state for double prime. To generalize further and better understand why these tetraethyl substituted methanes can exhibit such high configuration of stability, we need to consider the nature of the transition states. In both transition states, a formal positive charge is appearing on the central carbon. If these transition states are destabilized, such as by the presence of electro-withdrawing heteroatoms, we effectively raise its energy, thereby increasing the energy barrier of enantiomerization. Consequently, this leads to a greater configuration of stability of the molecules, depending a lot on the additive inductive effect of all the heteroatoms. To summarize, we successfully synthesized nearly 20 examples of tetra substituted methanes, achieving excellent isolated yield of up to 97%. This compound exhibited a remarkable configuration of stability with activation barriers exceeding 27 kilocalories per mole. In terms of optical properties, the most highly dissymmetric molecules demonstrated significantly enhanced caroptical response. Notably, the GFs value were up to 10 times higher than those observed in the corresponding tetraosa series. To rationalize the scale of the configurational stability of these derivatives, we compiled the activation barrier for all synthesized derivatives alongside previously reported DITIA diaza substituted methane. A clear trend emerges, increasing the electro withdrawing character of the heteroatom or hetero groups correlates with the higher configurational stability. This effect was indeed attributed to the destabilization of the transition state involved in the ring opening process that leads to an enantiomerization. Thank you to Olivier for discussing this new technique for the formation of chiral heteroatom spirocycles. If you'd like to learn more or use this method yourself, please check out Olivier's recent publication in JAX. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to support our podcast, please consider subscribing to us here on YouTube or following us on Twitter. Thanks again, and we hope to see you next time.